Hello and warm welcome to my channel, Converse with Dr. Sanj. So today, I'm standing in Royal Greenwich Park, a very historical place. So as you see, can in the board. So this is the Royal Observatory. So why am I here today? To tell you a fascinating story. If you time travel to 17th century, 1600, 1650, this part of the river was very busy. It's called Royal Docklands. So lots and lots of ships coming in, docking in, and then leaving away to various parts of the world, whether to Australia, Asia, or America. So the, dock, the people on the docks, they had a problem. One is finding your latitude, which is how far away you are from the equator. That's the lines parallel with the equator. And then the other side, if you take a globe as an example like this, the vertical lines. So they are called longitude. And that tells you how far away you are from certain point, reference point. Finding the latitude is easy. What you do is you measure the angle between the midday sun and the horizon. The angle, using that angle, you can calculate the latitude. The longitude wasn't straightforward. It was a bit hard, actually. So that's where the problem was. And then during that time, King Charles II thought he would help to solve this scientific problem. And he actually established the very building you see behind me, the beautiful red building and all other parts of that. In 1675, he commissioned this Royal Observatory here in Greenwich, London. So what he did was he hired the best scientists at that time. One of them was John Flamsteed. He was the very first lead scientist, or there was another name for that role was called Observer Royal. So the first Observer Royal was John Flamsteed. He actually lived here and conducted various scientific research over 40 years. To recognize his work, the building, the red one you see behind me, is called Flamsteed House. That's named after John Flamsteed. So what he did was observing the sun and the stars. So he worked on calculations, the patterns and equations to find the longitude. So after that, what they did was they published a book explaining all the scientific and mathematical formulas. So time moves on. Another problem was these ships has a special gadget called chronometer. That's like a timepiece or the clock. The, but the problem those chronometer had was they were not accurate. Those chronometers needed to be synchronized or reset time to time to make them accurate. To help with that, there was a mechanism established in that building. It's called time ball. If you see on top of that building, the red ball, it's actually still working. Um, so what they did was, during a specific time in the day, that ball goes up and then drops. The time was exactly 1 p.m. So five minutes before 1 p.m., the ball starts to rise. And then when it reaches there, sharp 1 o'clock, the ball drops. So people watching that, either ordinary people or the, um, the seamen on the ship, they reset their clocks. So that's one other important role this building has been doing. Like I said, it's still working, still happening, um, but may not be used by so many people these days with the advancement of technology. The other important thing about that building or the premises is the prime meridian. So there's a line over there, it's called meridian line. So that place is called prime meridian because the reference point, the meridian is zero. What does that mean? 
So I'm sure you heard Greenwich Mean Time. So Greenwich Mean Time is used to define the time zone. If you are now living in Australia, in Sydney, or New York, so what you do is you tell your num um, time with plus or minus GMT. As an example, for New York, for New York current time is minus. 5 GMT, which means New York is five hours behind Greenwich Mean Time. This very reference point. Actually, if you go inside that building, there's a line drawn there, and that line is called that part differentiate east and west. So if you go there and stand with your legs on the other side of the line, half of your body is in the west, the other half is in the east. So that's why it's called prime meridian. One other thing, so during 18th century, so there were a few prime meridian places used. So scientists gathered and decided they need to agree on one prime meridian place. So in Washington DC in US, they gathered in a conference and eventually decided that prime meridian, the official one, is here in Greenwich. And then, over the advancement of technology, again with the GPS, they remeasured and found that the actual meridian line is actually 102 meters to the east side of that original line. So, on my right hand side in the park, if you walk 102 meters, away from that original line, so that's where the current, official, correct, accurate line is. In the 1940s, after the Second World War, it was decided that the light pollution here in London was too much for scientific research, especially to observe this case. For that reason, it was decided to move the Royal Observatory out of London to the countryside in Sussex. Subsequently, in the 1990s, it was again moved to Cambridge for the same reason and eventually decided that it needs to be moved out of UK, mainly because of the rain clouds. Um, it's quite difficult to find clear skies throughout the year. For that matter, they agreed to move the Royal Observatory to Canary Islands close to Spain. With that, we have arrived at the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed it. So, together we time travel to 17th century. We talk about the River Thames, how busy it was during that time. The ships and the sailors on those ships, the very problem they face, how to find the location when they are in the sea, and how King helped solve that problem by commissioning and facilitating the Royal Observatory here in the Greenwich Park in London. Let's meet up with another conversation very soon. Bye-bye.